Hello and welcome to a new video about electric circuits, calculating electric circuits. We talked a lot, yeah, we talked about different theorems, yeah, Devon, uh, Norton and so on. And, well, today we want to discuss what is happening if we don't have only one power source, voltage source, source, current source, in our network. What if we have more? Yeah? What to do then? Uh, here I have an example. This is our situation, let's say, yeah, for whatever reason. We do have one voltage source, we have a, a current source, we have a network of, of resistors in there, and we're interested in how much would be the no load voltage at those two connectors, A and B, between those two, how much would that be in this situation? So we have here 30 volts, we have here 200 milliamps source, and what to do? Yeah. Superposition is the is the keyword here, and superposition means I am calculating everything like only one source would be inside and set the other source zero. We already got experience in setting sources zero. Uh, please remember when we did this Norton theorem and so on we, to calculate the the internal resistance, we also had to set the source to zero. And we do the same here. So we simply select, that's the first step, first step, yeah? select one source, and set all others Zero. Here in example are only voltage source. Voltage source. This is what I'm going to calculate now. Eh? And I'm interested in this voltage, so I'm going to calculate this voltage. So let's see how this would look like with only the voltage source. So the voltage source is still here. Then we still have this R1 here. We still have this R2 here. There's the clamp. Here we have the zeroed current source. It's just nothing. Hmm? Zero, currents, zero current means open. Here we have R3. Here we have our 30 volts. And here we would have no load. One. Mm. With, first, with first source. Mm. So let's see. What is our next step? What do we know those two are parallel? I hope you see this. Yeah? So those two are parallel and here it will look like that. R12 is 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2. And here this I can skip. So here we have only R3. And here we have 30 volts. And now the total, total thing would be here the source. And here we have a total R123 uh, in case 1. And this is R12 plus R3. Right? So actually, if I put this further, it's 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus R3. Now let's get to the numbers. 1 divided by 1 divided by 1000 ohms plus 1 divided by 1000 ohms, a 1 and a 2 are both 1000 ohms, plus 2000 ohms. 
and this is uh, 500 plus 2000, 2500. You can type it in your calculator, but I know 1000 and 1000 in parallel is only half of it, it's 500 and 2000 more, so it's 2, 2k5. You can also say 2k5, uh, 2500, 2.5 kilo ohms, uh, all names. So here we have 2500 ohms, and here we have 30 volts. Uh, so here, how much is the current? Ix. This is 30 volts divided by R1231 and this is 30 volts divided by 2500 ohms. And now I grab the calculator. If I find the cal it's not that far away. I grab the calculator. <laughs> so it's 30 divided by 2500 and that's it, 12 milliamps, 0 0.012 ampere, 12 milliampere. This current, Ix, is also here. Here is Ix, right? And here we have U3. Yeah? And U3 is R3 multiplied by Ix. So this is 2000 ohms multiplied by 12 milliamps and this is 12 milliamps multiplied by 2000 24 volts here is u3 and u3 and u no load 1 is the same so this is already u no load 1 if we would only have the voltage source inside without the current source, then we would have a no load voltage of 24. But we don't have this, right? So there is also a second step. There is also a second step, and the second step is select another. Step number two. Select another source. And do the same. And in our case, we only have two sources. So we are already done. If we would have more sources, then you can extend this. So we have to calculate this for every source. So let's see. I'm now setting zero the the voltage source, right? So I need a zero set at voltage source. Here it is. Then I have the R1. Then of course I have R2. Here's A. Here, now I have the current source. And of course, I have also R3. B. That's it. So here, actually, we have our 200 milliamps. And this is 1000, 1000, 2000. We. <laughs> Yeah, we come to the great finale, so I made a brrrding. <laughs> so, this is what we're going to calculate. And now I would really be interested in who already sees what is going on there. Because I can tell you now, R1, R2 and R3 are all in parallel connection to each other. Yeah? Even if it does not look like that, yeah? but they are in parallel. I show you what I mean, because this thing I could also draw like, like that. Here. 
here's our 1, here's our 2, here's our 3, and here's A and B. This is exactly the same. <laughs> I hope you do see that. Huh? Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a, a closer look, maybe, so that I can make it more... This point here, uh, this one. This is actually it's that. Uh. So you see this, this green thing is that. This is the green thing. Uh. And the other side. Make it orange. Uh. Here's the orange thing. This is here, yeah. and this is here actually, yeah. and here, this is also this orange thing. So this, you see, this is all the same here. So those, it's, it's the same, they are in parallel, even if it does not look that way. <laughs> That's actually... True. Huh? So you see, uh, how did I call it? No load, no load 2. This is what I'm interested in. It's still here. U, no load 2. Huh? It makes sense to trainee this a little bit, to get a little bit more practice in, in seeing what is in parallel what, and what not. Because now, actually, it's easy. Huh? Because I have a current source. Huh? Then I have here a resistor R1232 and this is actually 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3 and this is actually 1 divided by 1 divided by 1000 plus 1 divided by 1000 ohms of course 1 divided by 2000 ohms. Now let's grab the calculator again. 1 divided by 1 divided by 1000 plus 1 divided by 1000 plus 1 divided by 2000 and this is 400 ohms. Here we have A. Here we have B. We are open, right? So actually here we have 200 milliamps. So here we have also 200 milliamps because here is nothing going out. Yeah. So we have here, this is still the no load voltage. Yeah. U no load 2 equals yeah? and now R1232 multiplied by 200 milliamps. So this is 400 ohms multiplied by 0 0.2 amps. So it's a fifth part actually. So 400 multiplied by 0 0.2 equals 80 volts. Hui, more. More. So now we've done this for all, for all sources inside. And the final step, step number three. Sum all, all values up. So we said we want to know the UNL. And this equals UNL from, from the voltage source, UNL1, no load 1, plus U no load 2. So this is 24 volts, this was. Huh? 24 volts, plus 80 volts. 
and this is 104 volts. Done. Huh? And this is true. This you can do for almost all for all elements. Huh? You can do this for all elements. If you want to know the voltage on R1, yeah, just calculate the voltage on R1 with just the the voltage source or with just the uh, current source and add those two. Yeah? Important is to know that. Um, that those those currents and and voltages and so on which you are calculating with only one source they are not really there because uh, you know sometimes it looks like there is a huge huge current or voltage somewhere yeah? but if you add the other source then there is this huge thing thing exactly in the opposite direction if you superpose this only a tiny thing is left this is happening quite often so. Uh, just because you get uh, unusual values with just one source uh, does not mean it's wrong. Uh, because this actually is not, is not uh, there really. Uh, because you know you have two sources or more sources inside there, so you only see the superposition in the real world. Yeah? But in for calculating this in a more easy way, you can calculate this different also. Yeah? You can make uh, equations and so on, and then try to express uh, unknowns and, and substitute and so on. Well, if you like that, you can do that. Yeah? But in superposition is maybe... No, it's not more work, it's a different type of work, but uh, I think it's more recipe-like. Yeah? And you do less errors then. And it's the goal, actually. Like already said, doing less errors is the goal. Superposition principle. Now, actually, we can calculate almost all simple circuits, let's say. Huh? Simple ones, well, with just resistors and sources and so on. If there are other elements inside, we will come to this. Yeah? There are capacitors, there are, there are then inductivities and so on. Uh, it's working a little bit different, but for us now, that's enough. Uh, next videos will be about some special things I want to show you. Yeah? Next video is about a voltage divider. That's a special uh, simple circuit which will help you to, to solve things easier and, and with um, faster. You can often use this. How a voltage divider is working and how you can calculate it pretty fast, I show you in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.